This propositional logic or propositional calculus was actually, uh, it is also a kind of language. You know, the problem with the normal language, any language like English or Greece or any anything, any language is, these statements or the sentences that we speak, uh, they generally have more than one meaning, which means they are ambiguous. And when we have to, uh, you know, do any strong argument, argument means if you have to say that uh, there are some facts, let us say statement 1 is right, statement 2 is right, statement 3 is right. Therefore, statement 4 is derived from all these statements. If you have to make any such argument, then it used to be difficult using the normal languages. Okay, so I'll tell you why it has originated. Initially, there used to be these uh, philosophers. I, I, do you know history? I mean, if you remember history, you might have heard about uh, Socrates, Plato and Aristotle. They were the uh, greatest uh, philosophers and teachers in uh, maybe 300 BC. So, in 300 BC, these people used to uh, teach philosophy uh, and the first one was uh, Socrates. And Socrates used to be a philosopher and he used to teach many things and most of them uh, and, and unfortunately he was actually imprisoned and he was killed because he used to spread, uh, he used to, you know, uh, the main reason why he was killed is that um, he used to tell the youngsters that the uh, gods are not there and they should not worship gods which means he is a kind of atheist and for that reason he is actually imprisoned and killed by poison but then he I think he lived till the year 70 years old so by that time he has done the damage he had to do which means he has you know his teachings were highly popular but then no one have actually uh, written them down or you know proved them right or proved them wrong so later his disciple Plato uh, he wanted to again continue his legacy and you know uh, spread his teachings and so he has started Plato's Institute I mean it is a kind of university you can think of where philosophers will come and discuss see earlier there used to be no classrooms and all such things these youngsters they generally go to a old person and the old person generally teach them philosophy philosophy means what are the what is the meaning of life and of many things what is the meaning of this what is the meaning of that like that and in order to prove that their arguments are right they have to come up with certain kind of uh, language if you follow the chain of these statements you can come to a conclusion that is what they wanted for that reason even Socrates he said many things and then this uh, Plato tried to promote them but they were not able to give the solid proofs for what they said right either if you want to prove that uh, whatever you said is right or wrong there have to be certain facts to it now given that you have facts you have to come to a conclusion isn't it and it was not possible without a uh, language which is unambiguous for that reason this uh, propositional calculus our propositional logic has been developed or designed and later his uh, his student plato student socrates he is around 300 bc and he is also around 300 bc which means disciples and finally uh, his student is aristotle and aristotle has actually invented this system this language kind of logic using which he started to prove that whatever they said were right and also he started giving his own theories and his own philosopher philosophies and to his credit even aristotle was having a great student you must have heard about him alexander the great alexander the great was also around that 300 bc and uh, he started from macedonia in greece and he defeated persia as you know persia is now modern days uh, i think iran and this that was the biggest largest empire even in 300 movie also you might have seen that Spartans and Persians, right? So Alexander has defeated the Persia and from Europe he came to Persia, defeated them and from Persia he came to India all the way defeating everyone and in India also he, he was almost defeated but then he finally defeated the king, some Maharaja in India, Punjab Maharaja, I don't know his name 
and uh, there he there he went back and because of uh, his disciple the teachings of uh, aristotle have become so popular and this particular theory was popular you know from that time nearly 2500 years ago all the philosophers since that time have started following aristotle's teaching because of uh, alexander only otherwise if alexander would, have, would not have been there the world wouldn't be knowing how this uh, aristotle or his teachings or his language this particular language uh, yes in india also we have we we had great teachers at that time uh, see after this uh, this is all history i'll start. i mean it is interesting if you are if you are interested in this you can read about it i'll just say a few lines and then we can get into this subject since we are here i just wanted to tell you this uh, this uh, alexander and all these people they were living in 300 bc only and during that time after the death of alexander in india also one great teacher uh, he got popular uh, he also started in university and his name was uh, chanakya you must have heard about him chanakya and uh, he, many movies were also made on him and his uh, university was takshila takshashila and he also had a great uh, disciple or student who was uh, this uh, maurya that chandragupta maurya and chandragupta maurya they have created this mauryan dynasty and after chandragupta maurya grandson of chandragupta maurya was ashoka and after alexander the great ashoka has become very popular and so uh, maurya has defeated nanda dynasty and he has created a very large empire and almost all india was under the control of uh, chandragupta maurya and after that ashoka has taken off it right and it is all again because of chanakya and it is believed that chanakya has studied whatever uh, aristotle has taught but then it was never actually shown in any of the movies this is what has been believed and the logic that he has taught has helped him and then this has helped him and probably this might have been a reason why ashoka has changed so there, there is a lot of controversy in this there is no evidence but then there have been many books suggesting various versions of it but ultimately what we can say is logic has been developed in uh, europe and it has traversed all the way to india and even many people have started following it they, you know developing this kind of arguments using this logic which is a different kind of language and it has ended in uh, india and since then uh, it has become widely popular so yeah so you can read about this uh, entire history if you are interested world history and then philosophy you will understand it and now what are the various applications is initially it has been used by philosophers and later it has become very popular in mathematical logic so in mathematics which means in ma- mathematicians also uh, have this habit of proving the theorems so whenever you have to prove something you have to write down all the facts you know and then you have to draw the conclusion and when you are writing all the facts they should be written in a unambiguous language and there we wanted this logic and that has been popularized by mathematicians and uh, even mathematicians for the past 2000 years have been using this and after this uh, mathematicians recently it entered into the computer science and computer scientists have started using it and currently artificial intelligence has got lot of applications of it so if you want a machine to decide what is right and what is wrong uh, by just having or using certain rules without using a complex neural system like us then they are also designed based on this uh, logic okay and other one is even computer engineers are also using it so if a computer engineer has to develop a system that is called as system specifications he has to form the system specifications and these specifications have to be very very unambiguous and if they have to be unambiguous they have to be written in a language which is not our natural language so for that reason computer engineers are also using uh, this this particular logic for system specifications right and uh, the applications are actually increasing uh, every day 
so there are lots of applications other than this and maybe you can also think about it in if you want to prove anything right mathemat not just mathematical if you want to prove anything right or anything wrong any argument then again it is being used so it has got lot of applications and since it is being applied in this artificial intelligence in computer science and system specifications it is included in gate syllabus and uh, it is actually studied in uh, masters as well so coming to the exam we might we might have just one or two questions maximum one question not two questions also there have been no reports of two questions being asked so there will be at most one question from this one mark or two marks but the beauty about this one is you need not use any calculations to come to the answer you can just read the question and by looking at the options you can you can directly say which one is right and most of the questions are very easy in this so what i'll uh, what i'll do is i'll take as many examples as possible since it is a new kind of language you might not be able to understand it right away but as we go and as we do a lot of examples it will be very easy right and it will not take a lot of time also so please don't uh, ignore this it will be very simple and it is important and it is not not that time taking okay so what is the basics of this subject is there is a word called as preposition so what is the meaning of preposition is any declarative statement with a truth value assigned to it is called as a preposition so what is a declarative statement is for example i can declare that my name is ravindra babu rawla is it a declarative statement yes does it have a truth value yes you can say either true or false my name is ravindra babu rawla yes it is true isn't it so this is true and so it is called as a preposition now what are the statements that don't qualify to be a preposition logic if you cannot assign a truth value then uh, you cannot say it is a preposition for example if i say i am hungry right you cannot say whether it is true or false i think it is not a right one to say uh, let us say you have a statement like x equal to y plus 1 something like this then it is a statement but then it, there is nothing like you know you can assign any truth value to this therefore any statement to which we can assign a true or false is called as preposition and when we deal with this prepositions or the uh, area which deals with prepositions all these prepositions is called as prepositional calculus or prepositional logic okay so what are the various things in this we shall we shall go one by one we shall take examples and i'll explain you uh, each one okay hi if you have planned to do masters then doing masters abroad is better than doing masters in india i'll give you all the reasons so first reason is out of 1 lakh students who take gate every year there are only 500 seats in old iits so all the iits put together have a acceptance rate of 0.5% and iits universities better than iits they have very good acceptance rate like 30% 40% but all the iits put together have a acceptance rate of 0.5% and if you are working hard to get into iit bombay iit bombay's ranking is 177 and iit roorkee's ranking is 400 if you are happy to get into iit roorkee then getting into universities better than iit roorkee is easier compared to getting into iit roorkee and looking at the salaries for computer science of uh, for software jobs if you have done your masters in computer science in us the salaries are ranging from 80 lakhs per year to 1.2 crore per year so even if you take an average of 1 crore per year your savings will be much higher than the salaries in india after taxes and your cost of living you can easily save 40 to 50 lakhs uh, per year and in india the maximum jobs that you get is around 30 lakhs so your savings will be much greater than the salaries in india and these are all the services that we provide university shortlisting so depending on your profile we will shortlist what are the universities that you have to apply and statement of purpose building 
and then LOR guidance and GRE and English test assistance and education loan assistance. So you don't have to have any collateral, which, which means without any security, now you can get education loan. Getting education loan is very simple these days. And whatever the amount fee, the amount of uh, fee that you have, you have a range of uh, universities. You can apply for 10 lakh universities, 20 lakh universities or 50 lakh universities. But whatever it is, you are going to get complete education loan and you can pay off your education loan in one year after you, getting a, after you get a job. And then we do visa assistance, mock visa interviews and then connecting with the university alumni. So now you might ask why we should join the of visas. So the answer is we have 90% success rate, 99% success rate. And these are all the destinations that we guide the students to. So we guide students to any country that you want to go. So now it is not just USA. We guide to UK, Germany, Australia, Canada. So we guide, we guide students to all the countries. We work with all the destinations. And if you are interested in going abroad, you have to just drop us a message on this WhatsApp number 9494 Okay, thank you.